I'm often asked, especially on Gardener's Question, what is the best small tree for a garden? Mine is quince. I love it, especially at this time of year. So they were often featured in Renaissance paintings and I think that's why I got the inspiration to have the four quinces in this courtyard on the corners. If I had put a quince in the middle, I would have had a quincunx of quinces and a quincunx is a shape of a five on the dice. Um, so it's Cydonia oblonga, the quince, that's its Latin name, and people often confuse it with the um, Japanese quince, which is Chishonomalis, and that's a small fruiting ornamental bush. And it has little apple-shaped fruits that you can use, but it's very different from this, the proper quince. And this grows about four metres high. I planted these about 30 years ago. Um, and I love them because they have such a long season of interest. So first thing in the spring, very early, usually March-ish, they start to come out the leaves and you have these sort of felted down on the leaves and they look grey. And everyone thinks, oh, spring's coming. The quinces are starting to burst out really quite early. And then, you get the really pretty blossoms, which are white with a tinge of pink, and they hang around on the trees for a good couple of weeks at least, um, depending on the weather. Um, and then later on you have the foliage, which is usually quite dense. Now this isn't so dense because of how I prune them, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then in the, in the autumn now, from September, October, you get these lovely golden orbs. And not only do they look magnificent and they hang on the branches for ages, but they smell divine. I'll pick a basket of these in a minute and I'll take them inside and I'll put them on the kitchen table and the whole room will scent, be scented with this wonderful fragrant aroma that I cannot quite describe. But everyone who comes into the kitchen says, oh, what a fantastic smell, what's that? I think if I could make an incense of it, I would do. Um, and then in the winter, you have the outline. So after the, the fruits fall and the foliage does go more golden colour than this, then you have the winter outline of the tree. Now, some people say they're unruly habit. And as you see, it is quite bent and twisted. Um, it's very difficult to go a perfect standard with the upright leader because the fruit tends to be born on the tips of the branches. So it's a tip bearing fruit, which weighs the branches down, which means you don't get that central leader. But I love this sort of goblet shape, which these are. Um, so I did make one mistake when I planted these quince though because they do get this um, quince leaf blight and you can just see on some of the leaves it's a little bit brown and blotchy um, and there are some varieties, well one particular that I know of that's really resistant to this which I'm growing elsewhere just to try out and that is called Serbian gold so I tend to specify Serbian gold now when I'm using it on other jobs and that is similar except the fruits are much more rounded less pear shaped but um, it is a wonderful tree so as far as conditions so if it was on really good conditions really good ground really moist soil really fertile soil it might go up to eight meters in a warm climate but in the UK it's usually only about four and on our soil and this is very thin dry soil it still manages to well, but if you're planting an orchard and you've got a wet site, the quince is the fruit tree that really doesn't mind it when it's actually quite wet. So bear that in mind, it's very useful for that. And some people do, in Australia and things, they do grow them commercially because it is used for liqueurs and for jams and things like that, and membrio. So it is a commercially grown tree, but in the UK, it's not usually grown commercially. It's usually an ornamental tree in a garden, which we love. And it originated from Iran, but you do, it does tolerate quite cold um, temperatures. It will grow in Scotland, it grows in Europe, in Mediterranean. Um, and the thing about the fruit is it's very hard um, and you leave it on as long as you can, but you don't want them to fall because these hard fruits, although they're hard, they do bruise easily. So you want to treat them quite carefully. And when I cut them, I usually cut them with secateurs because they, you have to pull them away otherwise, which isn't particularly good for them or the tree. Um, so the fruits then are hard. And uh, um, when you're, they're grown in really warm climates, they do tend to almost be edible from the tree. Um, so they really grow in hot weather and they will almost be 
soft enough to eat from the tree. If I try to eat one of these, well, my daughter has them growing and they're on a street in her tree, in, in her garden, and they're on the, on the street edge. And sometimes passers-by late at night go and see them, think they're an apple, and they yank one off, put it in their mouth, and then, they hear, then you hear a shriek because they are quite tart. But if they were in southern Greece, then you could possibly eat them from the tree when it's a nice hot summer. But that doesn't matter because there are varieties in the UK, one variety, Isfahan, hello beetle, that you can actually pick from the tree and is meant to be edible. Now mine's only just rooted for the first time this year, my Isfahan, so I don't know yet whether you can. But as soon as you cook them, they do become sweeter. And I've actually just, um, I baked some windfalls <laughs> in the oven for the chicken, so they are a bit bruised. And actually, when you, when you eat them like this, they've become significantly sweeter than when they are raw. So the sugar level changes. Now the flavour is really very delicious. And what do you do with them? So my favourite is um, sweet and sour red cabbage. So the normal red cabbage, which you cook with a few onions and a bit of apple, uh, maybe some cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, pepper, cloves. If you actually put four or so quinces to a cabbage, a red cabbage, and bake it like that with the vinegar and other bits. It is really, truly delicious. The quince flavour comes through um, in a way that the apple doesn't or the orange doesn't when you do that recipe. So I think it's brilliant for that. Quince ice cream is fabulous. I've made a quince jelly, uh, which you filter it through, and it's a beautiful pale pink colour. And I even added scented pelagonium leaves to it, and you got the slight flavour of the pelagonium with the quince, and it was completely divine. Membrio, which is like a quince cheese that you have with lamb and game and things, is lovely. Quince marmalade, which is really a jam, is divine and because it's got so much pectin in the fruit you don't need to add loads of sugar so it's a nicer less less very sweet if you're concerned about your sugar levels marmalade than an orange marmalade um, so there's many things you can do with it and I always just shove a slice or two or an, a quince or two into an apple crumble so you get that mixed flavor or an apple charlotte or something like that it's a wonderful fruit from that point of view so how do you grow it? Well, you can grow it as a half standard or like I have here. You can grow it as a multi-stem tree or you can train it as an espalier against the wall, which I've done with my Isfahan. Um, and to propagate it, I'm going to propagate quite a few because it's quite difficult to get varieties like Isfahan and Serbian gold. So I'm going to take some, some hardwood cutting shortly. Um, and you can also grow it from seed. In that case, obviously, it won't come true, but I thought I might try that to see if I can get a, another variety of quince. Um, so I think that's covered really why I think it's such a wonderful tree. Um, I, I plant it on many, many jobs, um, but if you don't like the blight of it, you can spray with it, and some of my clients do. But the chem, and it is basically a fungicide, but it is quite difficult to spray a tree this size, but it is possible. I find though that if you add a lot of mulch, especially on my thin soil, to the soil, it does help to keep the level of spores down, which also does if you remove the leaves with the spores on when they come down, rake them all up so you're not letting the fungus carry over, but then put a really heavy mulch on so if the spores are there they can't come back up and that seems to help a lot. So it certainly wouldn't put me off growing them. I like to prune my trees in the summer months and that's because if you prune them in the winter months as you do with some fruit trees you get a lot of vegetative growth in the summer which makes it very shady underneath the tree and I like it to be quite light, quite open canopy because I love to have plants growing right up to the trunks. So if you feel inspired and want a wonderful tree for your garden I reckon this could be the one for you. Two more reasons to grow them. You cannot find them in supermarkets hardly ever, so it's wonderful to give people and to eat things that you can't normally get. And apparently, according to recent research, stomach ulcers are caused by an imbalance of helicobacter pylori in your stomach intestines. And if you have lots of quince, apparently it reduces the levels. So maybe that's another reason you might think of growing them.